Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are doing a plant spotlight on one of our favorite annuals, which is Lantana. And Lantana we love in this area. It's one of those annuals that um, you really want to grow in full sun. So that's usually what we start out with is, hey, where is it best grow? And it, it definitely grows in full sunlight, six or more hours of direct bright sunlight per day. That's what they really enjoy. So make sure that you get them out there in sunny spots. Soil is a little bit easier, should I say, in the respect of other, per, or other annuals, excuse me, with lantana, soil can be um, well-drained. You do want it to be well-drained, don't get me wrong. So it can grow in you know, containers, um, it can definitely grow in the ground or the landscape, but you wanna make sure that that soil is well-drained. Um, average to poor soils, believe it or not. Um, and what we mean by that is just like poor nutrient wise and also organic matter wise. So if you can throw some organic matter in when you're planting in the ground, that's great. If not, it's okay to just make sure that they're well drained. Um, they can take a little bit of moisture, but we think that they do much better on the drier side of watering. And that's why we suggest them most of the time for those really sun, sunny, hot, dry, humid areas that sometimes we can, we can definitely find in Northeastern Ohio during the summer. So um, keep that in mind. They are tropical plants, okay? They, they really originate from um, Central America, South America, also, um, Mexico and the West Indies, believe it or not. So they can take the heat. They're really around zone nine, which coldest temperature is 20 degrees, um, all the way to about zone 11, which is about 50 degrees for the coldest temperature. So again, that's the type of plant they are. They truly are tropical. They are very woody plants. Um, so right now when you use them during the annual growing season, they'll bloom and grow and, and do everything that they're supposed to do, but you actually can bring them inside and use them as a house plant over the winter. Couple things you need to know about that is you wanna actually keep them in a very bright area if you can. Um, if you don't have bright indirect lighting in that area that you wanna keep them, you might wanna light them with artificial lighting or greenhouse lighting if you can. And then keep them on the cool side. They actually grow much better at about 50 degrees over the winter. Um, that's a, a great thing for them, okay? Um, outside again as far as their needs are concerned any container any place in the sun really really great for them um, window boxes hanging baskets uh, combination planters absolutely do it combine lantana with all of your sun loving plants so it could be other flowering tropicals things like tropical hibiscus mandevilla they look great planted down at the base of them uh, also will grow very well with petunias, with sun patients, with verbenas as well, celosia. I love planting them with spiky celosia and then having them trail around. So again, any of those plants that do really well in those sunny sites, they look awesome together. And then make sure that you are feeding them. Um, they, they, they are all, all the varieties are fairly vigorous, but if you keep that fertilization consistent, that's where they're really going to succeed and continue to bloom very nicely throughout the growing season. We recommend Osmocote. I like the green cap Osmocote for these guys. Again, balanced fertilizer, slow release. Um, usually in containers, you're applying it once every six to eight weeks. Typically, um, you know, in the ground, it can go much longer um, than that, that eight weeks. So just keep in mind, but a really good slow release feed is great for them. With Lantana, they are self-cleaning, so they will push off the old flowers, bring on the new uh, pretty regularly for you. Towards the end of the growing season, you might see them produce some berries. Some varieties are sterile, don't get me wrong, so they won't produce berries. Others may produce kind of a green, kind of a small berry fruit that will turn black, okay? Those berries actually are um, developing seed inside, so you do wanna remove them and you know go ahead and trim those places. Um, be careful, Lantana uh, can 
can cause skin irritation. So you might want to use gloves when you're trimming and working with them. And that's okay. Uh, these plants have a milky sap in them. And so needless to say, that can be a skin irritant. It's also considered to be toxic. So be aware, um, very good outdoors for us and fairly good as far as deer resistance and bunny resistance, okay? So do remove those fruits. If you see those fruiting bodies start to develop. And other than that, these plants grow mounded and will kind of branch out and do a really good job for you in um, all the different sunny places that you want them to grow, okay? Uh, different varieties here. So when you come to Petites, you'll see couple different types. And so what's the difference between all of them? So in the first place, we wanna show you Bloomify. I do have Bloomify here. Actually, it's this one. This is Bloomify Red. Bloomify is one of the most compact varieties. It is also, as I mentioned, a sterile variety. So sterile meaning that it will not produce those seeds and those fruit that I mentioned earlier. It will continue to bloom and all of that energy from this plant will continue to push out more buds, more flowers for you. As we look really close, nice tight habit, all budded up, ready to go, ready to flower. You see um, some of these flowers on Lantana can be bicolor, you know, tricolor, multiple colors throughout the season. Um, most of them have a really tropical look to them. Obviously, it's because they are a tropical plant. So it's really great to have uh, around the porch, the patio, the pool, all those different areas again in the garden. So Bloomify, usually one of the more compact, probably around 12 inches by 12 inches out in the garden or in containers, okay? The next one that I wanna show you here is Shamrock. And Shamrock is a lovely, again, compact mounded variety. Shamrock um, is really, really uniform. All these flowers and buds kind of come out at the same time, really fill out, do very nicely for us. Um, but I will tell you, Shamrock for me, there's lovely colors in the Shamrock Shamrock series and all of them look like this. They are just a perfect mounded plant. So look for the Shamrock series of Lantana. Again, a little bit bigger than Bloomify, maybe like 12 to 14 inches tall and wide. Um, so just a little bit bigger, not, not that much larger. And then there is a um, Lucky actually, Lucky Lantana is gonna be kind of around the same as Shamrock but they tend to branch a little bit more and they do tend to grow up a little bit more vase shaped. So as this plant continues to grow, you're gonna kind of see that V come open, but again, nice repeat blooming. And I forgot to mention guys, the leaves on Lantana are what you smell. There's always this sweet aroma around them. And that's another reason why they are fairly good deer resistant and bunny resistant, because these leaves are rough, but they have a really kind of strong aroma or fragrance to them. And boy, you can, you can smell it. Whenever you're by the Lantana and you kind of just rub your hands right over the leaves, it'll release and it's really, really quite strong. Okay, and then this last one that I wanted to show you is Landmark. And whenever you see the Landmark series, it's gonna be the most vigorous. It's really gonna spread out. The branches are gonna elongate. We're talking closer to about a foot and a half to two feet long. Again, more prostrate, you can tell, kind of flattened in the center and then branching out. So this, of course, is gonna be really good for those hanging baskets to hang down, but also in the landscape, it'll, it'll It'll branch out really nicely for you. Again, beautiful colors. You just can't beat the tropical colors with this. And this plant is highly attractive to pollinators. So you will see bees, you will see hummingbirds, you will see butterflies, you will see hummingbird moths, you'll see all different kinds of beneficials on this plant. They really enjoy the nectar. And again, whenever you have a cluster of small tubular flowers, just like verbena, Whenever you see that on a plant, on an annual or perennial, that's always gonna indicate a lot of nectar there for the pollinators to uh, consume. So again, really, really great plant to grow. Okay, folks, um, that's basically it with Lantana. What you're looking for, again, is full sun, 
well-drained soil, again, can be poor, can be enriched with some organic matter. Either way, it'll work out very well. Make sure that you keep your fertilizer program going. So again, we recommend Osmocote. It could be miracle Grow. It could be some other types of fertilizers that you prefer, and that's fine too. And then just enjoy them through the season. And if you want to bring them in the house and in, indoors in the house over the winter, you certainly can do that too. Enjoy.